hello again. It is now time for part two of my August wrap up. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of books to go over. That's why I had to make this a two parter. So get ready because we're going to dive deep. All right. So part two, uh, I read a total of 13 books the second half of August. So I read a total of 22. That's a lot. Honestly, this is the first month in this year, especially since March, that I've actually tracked how much I read. Um, Cause you know, for a while there, when I was working from home, if I read, I read, if I didn't, I didn't. I really don't even remember what was going on from when I had to stay at home for work and then I finally got to go back to work. So here we are. I read a total of nine mangas. I read one graphic novel. I listened to one audiobook and I read two regular books. And I gotta say pretty much all of them I, I really liked. <laughs> I know in my last video I said um I know in my last video I said, oh, well, you know, I like pretty much everything. It's really hard for me to absolutely hate a book. So a lot of these are going to be like three and a half stars and above. I can't help myself. If I enjoyed myself, then I'm going to rate it pretty high or, you know, at least say I really like this book. So as we all know, I read volumes one through five of Akame Ga Kill Zero. I'm not going to have the books with me just because, you know. I was holding them like very awkwardly last time. Love it. I think I said that um, when I went over my haul, like I just really love a comic got kill. I love a comic got kill zero. I enjoy seeing a Kame before she joins Night Raid, even though I hate that she's an assassin for the empire. I still really like seeing her. And then these other relationships we that she has with other people. Cause you know, she has a completely different group of assassins that she's working with. And then her relationship with Kurume and her backstory, which you only kind of get a little bit of in the anime or in Akame Ga Kill, the manga, you know that Kurume has been drugged and tested on to make her a more powerful assassin. So that's very interesting. Gotta say though, the person who's in control of training Akame's group, and they're all young, they all, um, uh, what's the way to say it? So basically they get these kids when they're kids, they get these people when they're kids to train them up. So then the brainwashing essentially is supposed to stick, right? I did not like the fact that he wanted them to call him daddy. Cause you know, it wasn't just like, uh, I can't even say it. I can't even say it. <laughs> this is nothing against people who like to use that in a sexy way. I can't, I can't say that. I can't, I can't even do it right now. I can't say it in the way to describe to you, but you know what I mean? but he has them call him daddy. And I hate it every time because I read it and in my mind, I hear it in that way that I just don't like. <laughs> Other than that, it's just a really good series, period. I'm gonna finish the last five volumes next month. I already know this. It's just gonna happen. So five stars for a comic got kill zero. The next four manga that I read were Demon Slayer volumes 12 through 15. I mean, what more can I say? Like, it's a demon slayer. It's awesome. Like, uh, there's nothing more to say. I can honestly say there's not a single volume in Demon Slayer that I don't like. Every single volume slaps. It's amazing. They do such a great job of making the demons in Demon Slayer. <sighs> like you feel so sorry for them. Now, obviously there's some that are just evil and there's nothing that you can say or do to kind of redeem them as a character. But the vast majority of the demons here, when they have that moment when they die, which you've all seen if you've watched it, where there, a bit of humanity comes back and you see 
uh, this moment when they, right before they became demons in their life and it's just sad. So I cried at least once when I read it. I can't deny, I'm a crier and five stars. You're gonna hear five stars a lot. I'm not even gonna apologize. I'm a five star person and I love this freaking manga. So the next thing that I read was a graphic novel and it's Primer by Jennifer Miro and Thomas Krajewski. This is a really cute graphic novel. I wouldn't say it's my favorite though. Much like in my last video how I said I liked The Marked. It wasn't my favorite. It's kind of the same way with Primer. It's very cute. It's about a young girl. She's in a in a foster home. She's about to get a new family and she's very apprehensive about it because she has seen it all before. She's been in and out of homes where she thinks this is going to be a forever forever home, but it's not. And she's constantly I don't want to say tracked, but like her father is in prison and every single time she gets to be with a new family, he contacts her and stresses her out, really ruins the situation for her. And this new family is a little bit different. It's a, well, they're not really younger, but it's a couple. Uh, the dad is an artist or the man is an artist, not her dad, but the man is an artist and a teacher and the wife is a scientist and she's working on something top secret. She steals it and basically uh, the girl, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name right now. Uh, the girl can use paint to become a superhero. And that's really cool. I, I actually really enjoyed the idea and the premise of this graphic novel, but she's a teenager. Sometimes it's frustrating to read teenagers for me. I mean, I know that I was a teenager once, I get it, but some of the decisions are terrible. Don't do that. So that's what stresses me out when I read about teenagers sometimes, because it's like, don't steal, don't steal that, okay? Don't lie, stay home, don't sneak out. Why are we doing this? Come on now. But with that being said, I really liked it. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, I don't know if there's a second volume, but they set it up for there to be one. So unlike the marked, which I'm probably not gonna read the second volume, I will most likely read Primer volume two if there is one, because as predictable as some things were, it was still really fun to read. Okay, the next book that I read, I fucking love. Okay, I love Eat and Conquered by Joelle Charbonneau. So let me get it really quick. I love this book. <laughs> so I read Dividing Eden earlier this year. I picked it up at Books A Million. It was like $3 in the bargain section. And I thought, okay, this looks interesting enough. It'll, I'll buy it because it's cheap. Cause I'll buy a book if it's cheap, come on. But I didn't pick it up for a while. And when I finally did, I think I mentioned this at some point, no, I can't remember. Uh, that book pissed me off in all of the best ways. I was in this room yelling at the book, obscenities. I punched the book at one point because I was so mad, but it was so entertaining. Basically, it's about these two twins, Karis and Andreas. They're from Garden City or the Palace of the Winds. And the best way to describe it is there's been a death. They have to step up from being prince and princess to possibly king or queen. And there is a lot of uh, secret stuff happening in the background, manipulations going on. <sighs> and that book really pissed me off. But like I said, in a good way, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about this one. So this one takes place after the trials. And I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything because I really like this book. I haven't personally seen anybody talk about it that I followed in the past. So I don't know if this is a book that you might like and you want to read and I don't want to spoil anything, but it was hard to put this damn book down. Let me tell you. So it takes place after the trials and you are seeing what's happened to Andreas. 
what happened to put Andreas and Karis where they are, what's going on in the palace, who was really manipulating things, what's the plot behind the takedown, okay? And this was freaking good, okay? They got me with the switcheroonie. I cried two times. I cried at least once in this book. <sighs> They're definitely not scared to kill people. So I'll let you know that. But it was it was awesome. Honestly, this was five stars for me. I think that this book is really good, mainly because there wasn't a lot of like useless filler stuff. And I'm somebody who I can really like a book, but I can also, you know, say this is probably like 150 pages or more of useless information. And I skim through it. And I just skim to the point where we get to some dialogue because I can't take it anymore. And this didn't have any of that. And I'm also the kind of person who will, if I get too excited and I really can't handle, like, I have to know what's going to happen. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I hate, I hate surprises and I enjoy spoilers because I can't handle the anxiety of not knowing what's going to happen. So I'm the kind of person who will look up the ending to a movie. I will not watch a series because it makes me too anxious and just have someone explain it to me. Or I just know I'm not going to watch that again, but I don't care if you tell me. That's how I am. And when it comes to books, I'm the kind of person who will my, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, you know, when you are, your eyes are moving super fast, so you're absorbing all this information, and then you're skipping over things to get to the actual part. So you're missing a bunch of the fighting, you're missing a bunch of the dialogue or something just to get to the truth or whatever. I did a really good job of not doing that. I read every word. I didn't skim over anything. No matter how excited I got, I read it all. I mean, I'm always reading it all, but you know what I'm saying. This was good. I really, really, really like this book. So I would definitely recommend the series. Like I said, I'm... Did I say that? Okay, I don't know why I said like I said. I think it's just because I thought these things. So forgive me if I say like I said and you've seen another video and I never actually said that. It's because I thought it at some point. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that this is just a duology. Oh my god, the ending. I'm sorry, I almost forgot to say the ending. Ah, I, that's another thing I cried about. That ending, uh, I want to know what happens. Like if, I'm not going to say what happens, but if I could have a book just based on what that character does. Ah, uh, would be so good. I was like, this, this book really got me, dude. I finished this when I was at work. <laughs> I was sitting in my car and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's over. I can't believe it's over. So would recommend this. Please read Dividing Eden so I have someone to talk. Re read Dividing Eden and read Eden Conquered so I can actually talk to someone about this because I have so many thoughts and feelings and I need an outlet. And eventually, hopefully I can do like a video where I go like spoilery type situation. I guess I can always do that. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> there you have it. Okay, so the next two books, I read these because I got interested in the Summer Ween challenge. And I ended up reading The Troop by Nick Cutter, which was a book recommended by the host. And I believe Gabby Reads recommended this. And I also read The Caro Haunt by Darcy Coates. And that was a book based off the cover and a book that's about a haunted house and a book that it, you read at night. I listened to the troop. The thing is that I did kind of listen to it at night, but I don't know about you, but my brain is effectively trained that when I lay down in bed, okay, it's sleep time. Unless like I'm super wired, which is not very often, it is really hard for me not to fall asleep when I get in bed. So 
I, I did read at night, but honestly, I listened to the troop mostly during the day. And that was absolutely disgusting in a good way, but not really. Ugh, seriously, I listened to that on audiobook. And besides the fact that Gabby Reads recommended it, I happened to go on Hoopla and saw that it was free to listen to. So I was like, oh, well, well, this makes sense. I might as well choose this. Oh my God, that was a disgusting book. It wasn't even that it's super scary necessarily. Uh, ugh, it's just mostly disgusting, but in a good way. So I don't know if I'm really making it sound like it's that great, but I gagged several times listening to this book. Uh, essentially, there is going to be, oh, what's, uh, hmm. So the story is following a group of kids who are on an island. I think these people are in Canada. I can't remember exactly, but uh, it's like four or five kids that are on an island away from the mainland. Not like far enough that they can't see, but you know, they're doing this for like uh, Boy Scouts, something like that. And they're pretty much secluded. And there is somebody who has made it to their island who's infected. And I don't wanna go any further than that, but oh my God, that's not what I was expecting. I will say that, I mean, I don't know if I wanna say trigger warning, but if you are too grossed out by parasites or worms, mm, maybe don't listen to it <laughs> because like I said, man, this, this freaking book made me want to vomit. It was absolutely disgusting. And I absolutely hate parasites. So mm, just gross, <sighs> but it was like definitely like a four out of five book for me. I thought that the I thought that the plot, the premise was really, really cool. Uh, the, I don't wanna say monster, but let's just say the monster aspect of this is absolutely frightening. Worms are disgusting to me. And I think this is considered body horror. I mean, that's how I described it when I was uh, talking about how to discuss it. I was <laughs> on Facebook. Um, just know that this is a good book and this is a good recommendation and I'm glad that I listened to it. I think that it would it's gonna be a really great book to read but I have to say to listen to it was really great. So just if you want to listen to something that is just really really gross read or listen to The Truth by Nick Cutter you'll you'll get you'll get what you're looking for and lastly the caro haunt by darcy coates whoo this was a good book okay uh if this got turned into a show like uh oh shit, what was that show the haunting of hill house that was a good show this could totally be that and it would be just as scary this is about a, a woman named remy she gives tours in a haunted house, the Caro house. And she has been doing this for like two years. And on this most recent tour, one of the people, one of the tours, one of the people who's in the tour asks her after it's over, like, I would really be interested in getting like a more private tour. Can I get the information of the people who own this? Because I want to do an extended stay here and like film it or whatever. And it was really good. I Another book I finished when I was at work and I was like, I don't even want to be here anymore. <laughs> I really was mad I had to go back to work when this was over. Uh, this was just, oh, it was so good. Five out of five, honestly. Like I said in uh, my book haul video, I got this based on the cover for the Summerween prompt and because it takes place in a haunted house for the Summerween prompt. And I just... I don't know, I was just in Barnes and Noble and I saw this and I read the back and I was like, okay, well that, that sounds pretty good. And honestly, it was really awesome. Um, at first I was a little concerned that the moments where, and, th and it's just like in a movie, that's a horror movie. So I don't know why 
I acted that way. But you know, they kind of set it up. So there's something scary, but it's not really scary. It's not really what you, it was not ghost activity. They did that. And I thought, oh, I hope that this isn't like this the whole entire book. And it wasn't. It wasn't. It was not. It was so good. Honestly, I, I would absolutely read this again. And I really do want to read some more books. I just found out that um, almost all of her books on Amazon, if you have un Amazon Unlimited. Amazon Unlimited? Unlimited? Whatever that's called. I don't use it, um, but they're all free. <sighs> so I was like, oh God, I really don't want to get it. I don't want to, I don't, I would rather just buy the physical book than do Amazon Unlimited if that's what it's called. But uh, the fact that it's free, it's like I have access to all of them. Well, is it not really free though if it's, if you're paying that? But anyway, uh, I did get one of the books that's free through having Amazon Prime membership because I do have that. So I'm really not that. I'm a really trash person. No, uh, I did get one of her books for free through Am ha having an Amazon Prime membership. So that's on my Kindle and I absolutely want to read it because this was just good. Honestly, I've already recommended this to a friend and I'm going to recommend it to my other friend because I know that she would really like it. We both like scary books and this was scary, dude. This actually had me scared. <laughs> night um like I said like I don't when I read at night it's not like oh, I have to shut the lights off because I'm gonna fall asleep but I did manage to read maybe like five chapters before I, I succumbed to the you know sleepiness and let me tell you I thought I heard something in the middle of the night and then I had to walk around my entire house it really did scare me so I recommend it and there you have it that is my part two August wrap up like I said I had a ton of books that I really liked in the month of August I didn't read a single crappy one that was just like I hate this or DNF'd it I will say that uh there were two books that I said that I wanted to read that I just didn't end up getting to read. Uh, it was Amanda Rosen's, Rosenberg's book and then The Warrior Moon, I believe. I just wasn't in the mood for them. And honestly, if I probably hadn't heard about Summerween, I still might not have finished them, but I wouldn't have picked up The Carol Haunt and listened to The Troop. And I'm actually really glad that I did because those are awesome books, so. give them a try. But yeah, there you have it. I'm done. I'll see you again next time. I hope that the next time I can make a video, it's kind of loosely what I want to read in September. We already know that I absolutely have to finish A Comic Got Kill Zero. Um, my husband got me some other really cool books. I've started reading a few of those and I did start reading Amanda Rosenberg's book. So let's see if I finish it. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.